Hi, this is Danny from the Whiteboard Blog, and this is just a quick video to go through some of the features of Smart Notebook version 20. Hope you enjoy. So it's been a while since I've done one of these videos for Smart Notebook. I think the last version I did was version 15. So that's quite a while ago. Um, so here's a quick guide. I'll start where I normally start, which is the fact that we have a context toolbar up the top here, which basically looks identical since the days of Smart, Smart 11. There's not a lot of changes there. Um, just the icons have changed color, really. Most of the things you're going to want are there. Okay, so I choose a tool over here and this part of the screen will change depending on what pops up so if I click on the pens then the pens appear the pens that you'd expect are there as normal so the normal writing pen the calligraphy pen the crayon the highlighter the text pen and so on are all there again nothing's really changed for, for quite a few years now in this all the tools seem to be very much the same so you choose a pen next to the pens you choose a color you choose a thickness, a line style, and if you want to, a transparency, good if you want to create your own highlighters, uh, and then you just write with a pen. So that's basically it. To move something you've written on the screen, go back to the arrow key, hold your mouse button down, or click on the board, drag and move. Do a click, you'll select it. You've got three icons, sort of or three sort of anchors around the shape. You've got the green circle at the top, which lets you rotate it around. You've got the gray circle bottom right which lets you stretch and shrink and you've got the square with the triangle in the corner which then gives you all the other options that you're going to want like recognize clone cut copy and so on if you want to turn handwritten text into type text then you'd click on recognize hello and it changes it into type text in terms of the pens a fun one is the magic pen isn't as exciting as people think but if you click on the magic pen and you draw a circle with the magic pen it'll turn it into a spotlight which you can then move around to highlight part of the text, part of the screen. If you draw a rectangle with the magic pen, it'll zoom that part of the screen, which you can move around. You can increase the zoom and decrease the zoom by dragging that magnifying glass around. If you just write with the magic pen, what it does is basically sit there for about six seconds and then gradually disappears, which is what most people do, and then they're very underwhelmed. It's not the most excitingly magic thing that you can get. There it goes. We have the clickery pen, the crown highlighter. Most of those pens are really just for effect. The creative pen often goes down well in in primary schools because you can put nice colours on. And again, the other thing you might want to use then is going to be the the rubber or the eraser. That's here. Um, click to get rid of things. Do a big circle with a dot in the middle, and everything vanishes. So that's kind of the same as before. Next to the pens, you have the text. Text again, it's the same as before. Type. So click and type. If you just hit return, everything stays in the same box. Like so if you click and type, then click and type, then click and type, everything is in different boxes and you can then move those around using the arrow key. So if you wanted to make a matching activity or a sorting activity or a sequencing activity, then your words are able to be moved again pretty similar as before shapes are here click on the shapes you get the kind of irregular shapes I guess you'd say uh, squares boxes um, hearts stars click on the triangle to get a few more ticks and crosses and speech bubbles are there so they're quite nice so you could click on a thought bubble like so move it around and then fill it with some color now it's in front by default so right click go to order and send to back and it sends it backwards um, it's in front because it's the newest thing everything you do is always on top of the other stuff if you want to get other shapes um, we've got rectangles and triangles and so on so if I give myself a new page what I'm going to do is click on the rectangle I'm going to click and drag out a large rectangle keep my finger on the button and when I'm let go pow um, thing to think about with shapes is that they exist purely as a line there's no inside so clicking in here will do nothing to move it unless I click on the edge and then it, it can be moved once it's filled with color then I can move it and what I'm going to do is just click on there I'm going to duplicate it so I'm going to go to clone and give myself an identical version of that 
and then I'm going to fill that with black just because like that and if I go back to my writing I'm going to do a fun little activity which I've shown before which is basically I'm going to write in two two colors on the screen I'm going to highlight one of the words and I'm going to make that color yellow now what's quite nice is it shows down the bottom here my recent colors which is quite nice so I know it's that shade of yellow is what I used earlier so I'm going to click that yellow now what I've got is my writing in two colors I can put that over there and it's got hello if I drag it over to the black it says bonjour so you can do um, magic paper activities where there's an answer and a sum so uh, a sum and the answer a word in English a word in French a date and an event or whatever um, guides to that are on my blog uh, there's a video on how to make a magic paper activity elsewhere uh, the other thing you might want to do is lock so locking is the same as before right click or go to the triangle in the corner and go to lock and lock in place and you can fix something that's all quite nice so lock lock in place and then you don't accidentally move the shapes by mistake grouping is the same as before so if I fill with a color and fill that with a color and write something on the screen if I put all those together I can then select the whole thing um, right click group group and now that will move as one object again nothing's really different from before next to the irregular shapes you'll find the regular shapes and this is more for maybe teaching maths where you've got five sided seven sided and so on you've got actual proper regular hexagons and pentagons which you can fill in with color and move uh, one of the things we've now got which wasn't in the tools we had before if I right click on a shape and um, what you'll see down here are show and hide vertices show and hide interior angles and show and hide side length and this is the nice little tool for maths teachers show and hide vertices will put little white circles on the corners and so you can move these around so now you can distort a shape and make it look different if I show and hide the angles it will now show what the angles are of that shape as I move it around so let's say I put a triangle on let's put a triangle up and um, fill it in if I now right click on that and I show and hide interior angles and I show and hide the vertices I can change that and if I go to show and hide side length as well um, I can now look at the relationship between the side length as I make it bigger and smaller and you can sort of look at it and we can examine Pythagoras and all those kind of things so nice little tools for for math teachers there if you want them um, another thing that's worth looking at clicking on the add-ons um, and there's a GeoGebra add-on there which will put a GeoGebra widget in which is a, a maths um, geometry tool um, and it's a graphing tool digital geometry transformation those kind of things if you haven't seen the GeoGebra website go take a look I won't go into this now but it's there if you want it we also then have a paint bucket and the rubber and the lines tool so the lines tool again is what you'd expect we can do lots of lines for labeling pictures labeling diagrams um, change the thickness change the line style if I if I take a shape and I fill it in if I right click on it I can go down to infinite cloner and then once it's infinite cloned I can pull and pull and pull as many of these off as I like which just gives me a whole range of shapes the master one always stays there it's got the infinity sign in the corner if I click on that I can turn it off and move it and play around with it really good for making pictograms really good for making uh, tessellations uh, building nets that kind of thing from different shapes uh, build, making flow charts the other buttons that are kind of useful one is the screen shade which is there showing how the screen shade you can click on that and you can reveal what's on the left hide half the screen if you want to maybe there's answers on one side and questions on the other there is a tables tool uh, if you want it there's a table there you can click on the table exactly the same as you would do in Word and insert a table into the, um, the screen double click inside and you can type into there like you would do in any kind of other table um, you can drag shapes straight in, you can drag words straight in if you've got pictures and so on you drag them into a cell they'll resize accordingly again if you want to get pictures in no different to before the gallery is down over here on the, on the middle tab the picture frame tab go to gallery essentials and there's a wide range of um, pictures and images and backgrounds and so on just do a keyword search if you're looking for a particular thing um, a quick tip if you're looking for things like graph papers this is where you find them and you'll need to search for grid if you search for grid down the bottom here what you'll get will be all the different graph papers and you can just drag them in like so um, I'm gonna just do a little thing where I'm, so I'm gonna add a line that way I'm gonna add a line that way I'm gonna lock these lines in place because I want them to stay there so I'm gonna go to lock 
locking place. Let's say I've now built a page that I want to to stay like this. I want to use it lots. I've built a little template. What I can do is go back to the um, file sorter, page sorter, like that. If I right click on that page, I can go add page to gallery, and that will stick that page into a special bit of the gallery called my content. And in my content, if I go into my content, so I click on the gallery, I click on my content, and then down here I'll see under files and pages, there's my page. So if I ever want that page again, I can just pull it out from the gallery, and there it is, which is pretty cool. And you can organize a gallery into folders, you can have subfolders and so on of content, and you can export that and share that with your colleagues. We have a smart document camera, if you have one, it won't talk to other brands of camera, just the smart one. We also have the measurement tool, so if you want to put a, a ruler on the screen or you want a set square or a protractor you can get that uh, these will work with the pens so you can click it just in the right place and draw along i'm seeing a crappy pen there there we go so you can draw along that line i can then click um near the edge of the ruler that'll let me move it i can go back to the pen and i can drag it up like that so quite good for making sets of lines and modeling how to measure we can bring in a protractor as well so we can model measuring of angles we can do that we can move that out of the way let's move that line out of the way and we can measure those angles and, and rotate it around there should also be um, a pair of compasses on there so if i click on there and click on the compass uh, i can drag out and then draw lines pull that in nearer and draw a line and depending on where you click it'll draw so again for maths teachers that's quite useful the big button is this space invader button which used to be a top hat in older versions and wasn't there in, in much older versions this is the activities the, 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 the lesson activity builder if you click on there it'll open up the activities now this is what you're paying for basically so these will be um, not available if you're in smart note but basically this is what your license is basically paying for there are lots of them in here if you're on the 45 day trial take a look and see what you think of them there's there are loads um, I won't go into them now there's a whole video I'll have to do based on on these there's lots we can go into on top of that there's whole ways of making resources based on on those simple things I've just shown you I'll do another video with with some of those basic interaction tech like drag and drop rub and reveal and so on there's another video in there, some tutorial videos. But just a quick run through Smart 20. If you've used any of the versions of Smart since version 11, you're going to find nothing here that's going to surprise you. It's pretty much exactly the same. It's the lesson builder where, where things have really changed. So take a look. Any questions, um, please email me, tweet me, add comments below. Please subscribe. Uh, visit the Whiteboard blog, which will have lots of hints and tips and other things to help you with Smart Notebook, as well as other brands of interactive whiteboard. I'm, as always, more than happy to run tutorials on Zoom and so on if people want to get in touch. I can run sessions for you and your school. I hope you found that an interesting run through of what Smart 20 can do. Thanks for listening.